Well, I think it's brilliant. Uh, the, the, the silly thing for me is when you look at Ireland, Ireland's batting lineup is as good as anything in the World Cup if you're going to be really critical of it. Because some of their players have all got county experience, they've got World Cup experience. You've got the, the O'Briens, who have been fantastic. You've got Ed Joyce, who's been fantastic. You've got Will Porterfield, who's a fantastic player. You've got Sterling, who scored hundreds in one day international cricket. Uh, and you've got Wilson, who played a terrific um, knock the other day, and he plays for Surrey as well in the county championship in England. So they've got some quality players, Ireland. Yeah, what they do lack, and I think what most of the teams lack, except for probably Afghanistan, is a top first-class bowler, top one-day international bowler. But I've been really surprised by their performances. I think they've been top class. If you look at Ireland and Afghanistan, for me, the best two, the best two of the lot. It's going to be a great tournament no matter what you do, whether it's the 10 teams or whether it's the 14 teams. But for me, the two best games in the World Cup so far have been from the affiliate nations. There have been some fantastic cricket. There have unearthed some fantastic cricketers. And like I said, Ireland alone played 2-1-2. Two, two, but what a game that was against uh, the UAE the other day. If you're a cricket lover and you're a cricket fan, how can you not enjoy that game of cricket, what was on show uh, the other day, between two teams both fighting for, for, a, for a win? UAE wanted that first victory. And, and for Ireland, it was all about carrying on their good start to the World Cup. So that was a fantastic game of cricket. And then you go, uh, you look at... Uh, Bang, uh, Afghanistan, who for me have been fantastic uh, this World Cup. They've got a top-class opening bowler who can bowl at 90 miles an hour, and they've got experience in the batting lineup, which has enabled them to get some good scores in this tournament. Now, I played against, I've played against Ireland, I've played against Scotland, I've played against uh, UAE in a World Cup. I played against the UAE in, back in 1994 in um, in Pakistan. I can't remember exactly where it was. It might have been Peshawar, and and it was a great experience. I mean, for them, it was a great moment. And for me to play against them, it was an opportunity of what I saw to take wickets, which was very difficult in, obviously, uh, Pakistan conditions. I remember in 99, I played against Kenya. I got my 200th, um, 200th one-day international wicket against Kenya in a World Cup in 99. So it holds terrific memories for me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, playing in World Cups against the smaller nations. Do you know what I think I'd like to do at... All I'm a bit. The only thing I don't like about this World Cup, what's going on now, is but it's quite predictable, which probably which four teams should get through from each group. So I think for me it's quite predictable. What I'd like to see is all the teams in one group. They all kind of play each other, um, whichever way you want to do it there, and then the top four teams play in the semi-finals. That's what I'd like, and then you you definitely definitely going to get the best four teams playing in the World Cup semi-final. Because one upset, Bang the classic example for you is, Bangladesh played Australia the other day, yeah? It got abandoned without a ball being bowled. Now, Bangladesh got a point out of that game. Now, there was only one winner, going to be 99 times out of 100, Australia win that game. Yet, they come out of it, Bangladesh with a point. Now, that gives Bangladesh a serious chance now of qualifying for the quarter-finals. Now, it's, 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 it's a nightmare scheduling, isn't it? I mean, there will always be every World Cup you can go back, as you've just mentioned there, 92, 96. You can go on and on and on and talk about World Cups. Everybody will have a different preference. What I want somehow is to get, um, or, or even if they stay with the format they're using this time, but probably it's just the top two teams from each group. Yeah? So you play then the semi-final and the final, rather than four, because I think it's too predictable. How exciting would it be if only two teams from each group were going to go forward to the semi-finals? Because no one, even now, at this point in the tournament, you could not pick which two are going to finish the top. And I think that would be a lot better than everybody knows, really, except for there might be one upset, which four teams are going to qualify from Pool A and through Pool B. I would love it if it was just two teams from each group what went through to a semi-final and a final. So then you knew all the hard work had to be done in the group stages with a semi-final to play and a final to play. That would be much better in my eyes if you want to simplify it. Um, no, I, th I think the interesting thing where I've enjoyed watching about this World Cup, and, and I was unsure about it too, when you see the affiliate countries coming in, Scotland, Ireland, Afghanistan... 
um, at UAE. When UAE, I, I thought they were going to be by far the weakest team in this tournament. And the performance they put in the other day was brilliant to watch. I really thoroughly enjoyed watching that game uh, the other day. And so I've kind of changed my mind on this. And I actually believe now that these teams deserve a chance to shine in the World Cup. They are developing nations. They are developing their cricket. They've got quality coaches what are helping them. And their cricket, every single tournament, is improving, improving, improving. Now, if you want to look at the performances of someone like Bangladesh, who have now played in quite a few World Cups, are they, are they as a nation, improving? I would say not really. Not as quick as everybody expected them to improve. Now, if you ask me a question about are Afghanistan improving... I would say yes. Are uh, UAE improving? Yes. Are uh, Ireland improving? Without doubt, they've got a top six now, which is as good as anything in world cricket. All they lack is that world, world-class player, like your Gale, like your De Villiers, like your Corley. They haven't got that, but they're improving every single tournament and series they're playing. Scotland. Scotland are improving. I think they've been disappointed in this World Cup, Scotland. What they've lacked is consistency in performance. Their big players have not really come to the party. Their captain, Momsen, you would have expected more from him. He was brilliant in the tournament uh, preceding this, when all the affiliate nations played. He was a fantastic, he was the best player in that tournament. Yet, in the World Cup so far, he hasn't delivered. And with him not delivering, Scotland have not been able to show the talent that they've actually got in their country too. So I've been really excited by these countries playing in the World Cup. And going into it, I would have said, they shouldn't really be there. But having watched them and seen how they're improving year by year, I think it's been absolutely superb the World Cup has had these, uh, these teams uh, playing in the World Cup. 